Someone asked me how I made this ground ripple in this animation I made. Um, so here is how to do that. You can do this with a displacement modifier, but it's more, it's a lot more limiting. That's why I use geometry nodes to make this, but I'm gonna be showing you both methods. So first add a plane, scale it up five times. Apply the scale, tab into edit mode, right click and subdivide it about like 40 times. Tab back in object mode, go to the modifiers tab, add a subdivision surface and a displace modifier. Add a new texture, then open the texture tab, set the type to wood and set the pattern to rings. Now go back to the modifiers tab and bring down the strength. Add an empty, set the coordinates to object and set that object to the empty and then scale it up for wider waves and to make the waves ripple in or out we can bring the empty up or down but the further you bring it away from the plane the the, the waves get larger if I duplicate the plane to make it a wall you can see why this is happening the source of the waves are coming from the center of the empty now unfortunately as far as I know this is like as far as you can go with trying to make ripples using the displacement modifier and this is why I use geometry nodes instead so I'm gonna remove the empty and the displacement modifier and uh, open a geometry nodes window. Add a set position node and a combine XYZ node and plug it into the offset. Then take the wave texture and plug the factor into the Z axis. Set the wave type to rings and the direction to Z. You'll want to bring down the scale a lot, probably somewhere around 0.1. Then you can use the phase offset to animate it to ripple in or out. If you add a math node and set it to multiply, you can use this to change the intensity. Now I'm gonna explain how this works really quick for people who aren't familiar with geometry nodes. The set position node doesn't just change the position of the object, it can change the position of the vertices that create the mesh individually. Now this texture outputs a black and white pattern like what we saw in the texture tab, but these black and white values in the texture output a number between 0 and 1, 0 being black, 1 being white. Now when I take those numeric values and I plug them into the z position of the vertices, I'm telling the points to be at a height between 0 and 1 depending on where they are on the texture. And with the multiply math node, I'm kind of setting the maximum height that this can go to. Because 1 is the maximum value, and 1 multiplied by any number is going to be the number that you multiplied it by. And 0 multiplied by any number is going to be 0. And I'm probably overcomplicating this by over explaining it. All you need to know is if you want to scale a mesh, you can uh, multiply the vector. Now that I've explained all this, here's how to animate it. Plug the phase offset, intensity, and anything else you might want to animate into the group input. And you can rename everything in the group tab in the side menu. Now to animate this, let's change the geometry node editor window to a graph editor window. Set the phase offset to zero and add a keyframe. Then bring the playhead further down the timeline and set the phase offset to 6.28 and add a keyframe for that. If you're wondering about the specific number, it is pi times two. I figured this out by accident. Now select both keyframes, press T and set the interpolation to linear. Then in the side menu, go to the modifiers tab and give it a cycles modifier. And now you have a seamless loop. It can do that forever. The center of the wave thing right here is really pointy. We can fix this by taking the subdivision surface modifier and bringing it uh, under the geometry nodes. Modifiers affect the mesh in kind of a hierarchy from top to bottom. So first we have geometry nodes, then we have subdivision surface to smooth it out. Also you can add distortion to the texture and that looks really cool too. 